This is the M110, one of the best long range weapons in the whole game, being able to take down targets at 400 meters or less with two shots, that sounds good to me. Let's get into the stats of the M110. The damage is at a base of 51, which means it is the highest damage in the marksman rifles, as well as being a potential two shot kill. As if the target has no armor, you will be able to down them with two body shots. To pretty much get a guaranteed kill though, you normally want to start with a headshot, which does about 75 damage. You're pretty much guaranteed a body shot kill. So it's easy to get a follow up shot and just hit anywhere on the target to get the kill. For light vehicle damage is one of the ones which is pretty up there as well. At 20 so you can actually do some damage to humvees and little birds and just those life vehicles with this weapon so if you do see something on fire don't be afraid to just take some pot shots at it now the vertical recoil is at 1.5 and the horizontal recoil is at 2.5 which is pretty decent first shot kick is at 1.4 which is pretty high uh, velocity we have a thousand accuracy is 92.5 fire rate of 200 it's pretty decent speed of getting your second shot off and most of the other stuff that's we'll get into with the attachments mm. will make more sense. In this video, I have two versions of the M110, pretty much the exact same, except for one attachment is different. So we'll get into the first one. We'll go with the underbarrel rail, which I think is the most important one, and that would be the Stabil Grip. So this attachment is what I recommend for both weapons. As you can see, the vertical recoil is reduced, as well as the first shot kick is a significant reduction of 0.42, and the negatives that we get is aim down time and that's fine seeing that we're using this for our medium to long range engagements so we aim down time isn't that really important so our horizontal is looking a bit shitty but with the marksman rifles you are mainly tap firing so your first shot kick and vertical recoil are very important more so the first shot your first shot kick is now under one so that's the multiplier on every first shot that your weapon takes and that resets after a short period of time so if you do tap fire pretty quickly you won't be getting that first shot kick but then if you shoot pause shoot again you will be affected by that first shot kick once again so having it under one is really effective for this build next up we will look at the side rail now if you are pretty picky with knowing how far enemies away or you just want to know how far an enemy away is rangefinder pretty good seeing that the velocity of this gun is a thousand and we don't really want to be taking those extra long range fights seeing that the damage drop off of this gun is not significant but it is there compared to sniper rifles so a sniper will win in that long long range situation and i think when you go to that range that's the type of range that you need a rangefinder for is those extra extra long range <laughs> <laughs> range, range, range. <laughs> anyway, so my recommended one is just the target detector. This one is just free pings for your teammates and yourself. You don't have to worry about pushing another button. Instead, you can focus on aiming and just shooting at the targets. And then if you miss, then they'll still get pinged by your target detector. This does reduce your control a little bit as well as your draw speed. Now this one, you don't have to use. This is just a personal preference. If you are looking to maximize your stats, do not equip the target detector or anything in that matter and just leave your side rail empty. But for this build, we will be using the target detector. Anyway, now onto your main site. I've just left this as ACOG just because that's my personal preference. A good four time zoom. It is one of the longer ones in the medium range scopes and we are not putting on a long range because that will give us a sniper glint pretty sure this is the main difference between a marksman rifle and a sniper rifle at the moment is that if a sniper uses medium range they will get a sniper glint if a sniper is looking at you from over 200 meters or so and with the marksman rifles they do not have sniper glint so this is one of the core things of the marksman rifles actually coming up with the sniper nerfs so i leave the acog on and now for the top site this is for your medium range engagements just personal preference none of these attachments give you any debuffs so i've just used the red dot site i'm pretty sure but personal preference now the reason why i pick a top site is because with the canted site i do believe it is quicker to snap to but you do have less control and draw speed on the weapon so that's why i've just gone with the top site now onto the barrel 
So this is where we get our two different builds and I'll explain my reasoning. For the first one and majority of the footage, we have been using the suppressor long. Now looking at the stats, we can see that our horizontal recoil once again is getting kicked in the nutsack, but we do get the extra velocity of plus 100 and our accuracy increase. One of the big ones, sound spread reduced by 420 and muzzle flash is gone. And a few negatives, but they're just for your close quarters combat stuff, which we're not focused on. Also makes the gun even longer you know what I mean. But the main build that I was trying to go for here was that extra range. This is going to be your long range uh, counter sniper, your stealth pick off targets at range build. This is perfect to find a spot and like a long flank on your enemies or just be in a spot where no one's expected and to be more silent and go undetected for those high, high kill streaks. Now, the main negative of this build, of course, is the horizontal recoil. So chuck on a sneaky looking camo stick for, for black veneer but yeah whatever camos don't really matter up to you personal preference this is the sneaky long range assassin essentially so once again difference between this weapon with this loadout compared to a sniper you'll have no big ass muzzle flash because of the suppressor sound spread is very low so only enemies in 180 meters will be able to hear you even then at 180 meters it will be very hard to hear the bullet smoke trail doesn't exist for the marksman rifles so that's where this comes up above the snipers so if you are going for those long range long kill streaks i think this weapon is actually better than a sniper rifle now this is for long for extra long range of course snipers will win but this is definitely a really good weapon for your medium to long range engagements. And we'll actually go into the firing range just so I could explain. So with this dummy here, if we take a shot, we can see that our aim has jumped up a fair bit and to the right a fair bit. Now if we take another shot, it's going to pretty much the same spot. And another shot, same spot, another shot, that. This is the thing that will throw you off the most with horizontal recoil. Our recoil pattern went up to the right, what, three times, four times in a row, and then on the next shot, bam, up to the left. So in your muscle memory and just repetitiveness, you're like, okay, I need to go down to the left to get my shot back on target, and then all of a sudden your shot will go up to the left. And then you're like, oh shit, I need to go bottom right now instead of bottom left. That's the only thing that you need to be wary of with this build. Is that sometimes it can go left or right because of how bad our horizontal recoil is. If you know that it's coming and you're prepared for it, can still get your aim back on target pretty quick. Now I've put on the rangefinder just for this test, I know the numbers there, but then you can see it easier. So at this range, 152, we're dealing 51 damage, so there's no damage drop off. So that's 51 to the body and 76 to the head. And then if we go to 250, we're doing 50 damage, 0.88. So we're still able to get a two shot body shot kill from this range. So one dead. So 250 is still effective for a potential two shot body shot kill. Now if we go to 500 meters, hit for 4908, which means we do not have a potential two shot body shot kill anymore. And that's yeah the range where a sniper will have a better advantage. So really 418 meters, if you're any further than that, then you miss out on the two shot body shot kill opportunity. That does not mean you don't have a two shot kill opportunity because if you hit them in the head, it will do 75 damage still and then follow up with a body shot and they'll down. Now this is where if you're going for the extra long range, so this guy at 900, what 36 to a body and 54 to a head. So you're not even killing him with, with two shots. It'd have to be two headshots for that range, which is possible. Yeah, it is getting out of this range of the weapon. So pretty much 400 meters and under, you should be sweet. And as you can see, the bullet velocity is still very quick. Now, after that tangent, you're probably like, what the fuck is the other attachment, big butt sword? Let's just, uh. And we are going with the flash hider. So if we go back to none and we hover the flash hider, as you can see, our vertical recoil is getting the debuff with 0.29, uh, which is pretty hefty, but 
Our horizontal recoil is getting absolutely slapped down at 0.53. It's pretty much bringing the horizontal back down to two. And our first shot kick is minus 0.1. So it's bringing it down even further, which is crazy. Now the main difference from this and the suppressor is the velocity is not increased and your sound spread still stays at 600 so you will have much more presence on the map with this louder gun as well as the muzzle flash scale is not completely reduced to zero but it is 0.07 so the main thing with this attachment instead is that it's mainly going to be your vertical so we're pretty much just need to pull down and then move ever so slightly back onto our target it just makes it easier for follow-up shots. As well as with a red dot. Pretty much don't have to move at all. Whoops. So yeah, I found that sometimes I was just getting cut a little bit too hard with the horizontal recoil, so I did try out the flash hider and I do enjoy using that. So that would be my two builds. The suppressor long for the more longer range so, yeah. Oh, this one is, yeah, for long range, single tap, sneaky boy. And the flash hider is if you want to be unloading your mag a little bit quicker and going for those more sprees and bigger clumps of kills as well. Now, with the magazine, there is a short A and extended A. Both one is increasing your magazine by four rounds and the other is decreasing by four rounds. I've tested this out. It really doesn't give you that much of an impact. So I would just leave it as none and take the 12 rounds, which is a, a more than enough ammunition to take down a few enemies but let me know in the comments below if you do prefer one of these my personal preference is just leave it at 12 i think 12 is a good number so you can see that there's a big difference between using the flash hider and without and then the long suppressor which is Yeah. Now for classes, two things, if you are going for the sneaky boy, would recommend the ranger, you get the more ammunition with the six magazines, as well as then you get the more ghillie ass looking setup. So yeah, if you want to go sneaky marksman rifle boy, I do recommend using the sniper class. Now, if you are going for the medium to long range, I do recommend the assault class. Now with this, especially because you have access to claymores or anti-personnel mines, I still run C4 so then I can kill people at close range and deal with vehicles if I need. But if you are going for the camper build, claymores and anti-personnel mines are available and as well as having an ammo kit so you can resupply yourself and just sit back pick people off and resupply yourself but your character will you know stand out a little bit more and seeing that you're not going to be moving around as much the heavy so then you get the extra durability on your armor and you do have a large amount of ammo. The M110 has just been one of my go-to weapons for a long period of time now. But once again, the main use of this will be definitely medium to longer range engagements and to be undetectable or less detectable than a sniper with their glint, their bullet trail, their loud muzzle, and so on. Anytime I really feel like sitting back and not moving around as much, the M110 will come out. <laughs> I think I've actually used this more than I have snipers since early access launch. I have hardly really touched snipers even before the nerfs. But if you are looking to counter snipe or be a long range sneaky boy and give covering fire to your teammates, this is an excellent option. You might recall my time in Twitch Rivals. This was pretty much my main gun that I was using just because I knew all my teammates were going to be running in like crazy. So I was being the back player being the spawn beacon for my team. So that's another part of using this as the strategy and just, yeah, covering fire for your teammates. If you want to be more tactical with your gameplay, this is definitely going to be the gun for you. And I think the main thing with this is just the super satisfying 
double taps to kill people. So if you've got the time, line up that headshot and then just quickly get that second shot in before they can re react really. Most of the time when you do get hit once, you're like, oh yeah, whatever, shrug it off. And then the second hit will kill them. So they'll be like, oh shit, I actually died here. That's pretty much it for this video. I know I've ranted on a little bit, but I felt like I had to explain myself for my reasonings for these attachments a little bit more than my other videos. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, as well as if you have any changes or suggestions for this build that I've missed and what you think is better. I'm happy to try it out myself and get back to you. Now, if you liked the video guys, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. It helps out in the algorithm and just showing other people that, oh yeah, this video is all right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the updates in Battlebit Remastered, I do cover the patch notes as often as I can and let you guys know all the changes and new features and whatnot and what to be aware of and any guns or loadouts which become more powerful. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Big Monster!